Oh yeah, uh, good morning. So again, uh, good afternoon actually. Good afternoon everyone. I think it's time for us to uh, to enjoy our little lunch. So uh, I think when I share the screen, you probably cannot see me, right? Uh, you, you appear on the side. Oh, so you still can see me, yeah? Okay, okay, good, good. So, okay, let's uh, start. So we have about, uh, how many? We have about maybe 10 people uh, today for now. So um, this is our opportunity to get together once a week. And specifically, as uh, you would know, uh, I'm a big fan of R, R language. And I would like to show to everyone, this is very easy language to use. And in fact, you can use it uh, pretty much within five minutes once you just log into rstudio.cloud. So we'll be doing that. But uh, before, let's uh, start from a little introduction. So uh, my name is Dmitry Gredniči. I'm uh, the research scientist with the um, Canada Border Services Agency. So before that, from 2000 to 2008, I um, uh, worked at the National Research Council uh, of Canada, and uh, there I was developing uh, a number of video recognition systems. And uh, uh, in 2008, I uh, started my work at the agency, at the CBSA. So uh, at CBSA in the beginning, in 2008 uh, uh, till 2013, actually I was the manager of the Applied Research and Development uh, Group dealing with biometrics. And we were doing a lot of biometric evaluation. So a lot of data and we had to process the data. Uh, but um, after that, I switched more to just more data in general. So I will mention right now just a few words about logistics. Uh, okay, and bear with me. I'm still quite new to this technology. There are people still joining. So uh, let me switch from one window to another. Okay. So since 2000, uh, uh, I would say 2013, that's the year when I was for the first time introduced to R. So before that, I would have to write all those programs myself. So a little program which will do some linear regression or some neural network, actually I was doing it uh, myself. So uh, yeah, people are, more people are joining. So. Again, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm just providing a little uh, uh, background introduction about myself. So I did my PhD from University of Alberta and uh, the area of my uh, PhD work was in actually neural networks in artificial intelligence in uh, that was uh, 2000 when I graduated. And back then there was no R language. We had to write everything ourselves. It was in C++ at the time. So all those functions for neural networks, for regression, for extracting features, uh, we had to do it ourselves. Now uh, you can do it very easily uh, with uh, R. And in one line, you can just write a little neural network or uh, regression function. And you can do many beautiful things. Uh, you can open files from online, from uh, Google Docs, from uh, um, uh, any public data set, and we'll be using a few of those examples here. So I suggest the following logistics for our, uh, these lunches. Originally, there were uh, mornings, uh, morning coffees with my colleagues at the CBSA. We would just get together every Wednesday at 9.30, have a cup of coffee or tea, and just talk about uh, our work. And you know, we get excited with new packages, with new programs, with new applications. We're reading some blogs. Some of us are familiar with R, some are not familiar with R. So uh, that's how it has started a weekly uh, tradition to talk about R, about anything we want to talk in data science. So 
I suggest that we do the following logistics. Please use chat to ask questions, but please note also that uh, this uh, Zoom will, uh, in 40 minutes from the end, or from the beginning, it will just cancel automatically. So I may not be able even to read some of your questions. The best way to uh, write your questions may be on a GC Collab. I suggest that um, anyone who is interested just uh, write a comment there and then I will also myself I will be adding comments and uh, answers to that GC Collab uh, the data for the rest of us which uh, Dirk uh, Butner uh, has uh, created. It's a very beautiful great idea to bring people together and to discuss some things and to learn something new. So I suggest that we'll just use GC Collab to, uh, to ask questions and I will try to reply there. You're also welcome to contact me by uh, my private mail or by CBSA mail. And again, I will try to respond to those questions. So now let's talk about resources. So I will start sharing my screen right now. And in my screen, I will show you the pages which I will be using on our Wednesday lunches. So I hope you guys, you have a nice cup of tea or something, you know, that's my uh, tea. And uh, I'll show you what I have right now on my screen. So, this will, the, will be the page where I will be updating uh, what we are discussing. I will be providing codes. You see, I have already added uh, a few codes here to read the data uh, from uh, PSAS, our public service uh, employee survey. Uh, we have data of codes to read uh, data from John Hopkins University related to COVID. And it has data on uh, Canadian, or sorry, on international and um, US data. And then I have also codes uh, to read data from University of Toronto. Uh, and again, this is just as example, as example on what you can uh, read. You would normally have a PC file, or you could have a Google Doc file, like the case with the uh, University of Toronto U of T website. And then you would have a, a function which will read. A function is basic. Function is F3. So I'm just going quickly through the pages which I will be using today. So this is page portal. And here, by the way, you would also see all other discussions which we had in the past. And also uh, links, uh, links to a number of applications which I have developed essentially for fun, just to play with different technologies. You, you would see here uh, the border wait time application which I have developed uh, this COVID and um, also uh, the visualization for public uh, servant employee survey results. Then uh, you would see I, I, I'm trying to use um, LinkedIn to publish some results here. And uh, most importantly, I love this website, RStudio. From here, and this is what we'll be doing, we will be now just going there. We'll be going into resources, education. Look, and they have education portal and we just go there for learners and they have tutorials so and here you you could do all those tutorials now when you click there you will get into our studio cloud so that's where you can program, even if you don't have, if you don't have our, our studio installed on your machines, you can just go to, to our studio cloud 
and uh, in fact I could log out on, and log in so you can see how yeah so it so when you go there to rstudio.cloud it will ask you to log in and I use my gmail to log in then once you are there you would see something like that and here you see called primers and these are your tutorials so this will be one of those tutorials which we will be doing today so it will show you how to open a data file and how to visualize it so I suggest we will spend maybe about 10 minutes just doing this simple tutorial right here and you can follow me maybe in parallel you could open rstudio.cloud on your machine and just do it in parallel yourself with me and then maybe the last 10 minutes I will just show you the actual project which you can create yourself when you want to start doing your project your data analysis so so here it's a very interactive course and uh, so what it shows that there are a number of data sets which are already available in uh, our studio one of them is called miles per gallon and you can run the code by clicking control enter so here you can click run code but normally you just click control enter and it will execute a line so right now I just executed a line which means print the content of this file and you see it has a number of variables It has variable related to, to the size uh, of uh, uh, the cylinders and the mileage. And here is a simple code which would print you your first graph, which shows one variable against the other variable. So this is the line you do it now what is beautiful about this function ggplot that you can visualize it by color so i will just quickly go through through, through different things here and you see, I just click, click all the time on continue to get faster. Okay. So, so what I, I would like to do here, maybe that's a good point. I will just go back to my workspace and I will create a new project. So that's how you do it. You create a new project. For example, you'd like to create a new project to visualize uh, COVID data. So what happens here it opened our studio for you and in fact this is our studio exactly the same as I have running on my other screen in fact uh, I will show it to you in a minute so this is a, a typical layout and here you can say file create new file you say create new R script 
And in this R script, what I will do, I will go to our code here. I will go to a few examples. The code which will read this data. So I will just copy it. So see, so what is happening here? And now I can run it. Look, what I'm doing here, I'm pressing Control Enter. Okay, now it tells me that the function F read is not there. What it means that we need to load libraries. And I'll show you where those libraries are. In one of our previous uh, sessions, we had, we talked about that. That normally you would have all your libraries in one file, and you can call this file something like that common.r and then you will just write a line source and the name of the file so what I will do here I will just copy the entire list of libraries into my code here and you can do the same so these are the most useful libraries which I found most useful for myself. Okay, so the library which we need to load is this one. It's called data table. So I click control enter. Now, it says that the library here is not installed. Uh, so, how to install it? You go to Tools, Install Packages, and here you say Data, and actually it will show you the list of available packages. Install. It, what, what's good about actually this exercise which I'm doing right now, I'm doing it for the first time here in this cloud. Space. I've done it for my own machine and in fact I will just I'll show you on my home machine I have our studio and it looks exactly the same as you see it in uh, cloud so so, for example, just last night I was uh, doing some extra coding for my iTrack COVID application, and you see my setup is exactly the same, exactly the same program, R Studio. Now, in here, I can run session, what is called session in four, and it tells me the version of the R Studio which I'm running. On my home machine and you see that my, my version is 3.6.1 and uh, I would like to show you how to use this um, screen you would see here files this shows you all different files which I which I have there and uh, I would have a file called, uh, in my case, it's called DT. And I put the all beautiful functions which I have developed myself and uh, libraries. And we can do something similar here. But again, one thing at a time. You see here, it looks exactly the same. Here you have a list of files which are currently 
created there. Currently, there is just one file called project. But now we will save this file. We go to file, save as, and we'll do it, we'll call it, I like calling it just like that. So you see we have a new file here and this file now has this code and now I can read this file and I need to load. So we have installed but now I need to load. I click here control enter. Now it, it is loaded. And now I can run it. Okay, so let's say for time being it does not run because some other libraries are not installed. What is beautiful, look at the line here. It shows all packages which I have listed in my program. And you see there are many of them. All of these are beautiful, nice packages. And it shows you Okay, do you want to install those packages? And you click yes, and it will go and install all those libraries. So I will not do it now just because it, uh, it will take time, but you can do it yourself. So just go to rstudio.cloud and install those uh, libraries yourself, and then you would be able to run a function like this. And after that, you can start visualizing this data just the same way I was doing it in this tutorial in this tutorial so I'm just looking at the time right now we don't have much time and I would like still to give you opportunity to ask questions and uh, ideas so um, I'm using a uh, John Hopkins uh, data set to read the data and then visualize it. And here you can see what I'm doing with this data. I will just quickly go through the functionalities of this app. And uh, what's beautiful about it it starts with that line which I just have shown you. The line which reads that CSV file. And then I can visualize it in a number of different ways. And I will start adding more and more codes in uh, that R101 directory. But let's go quickly through this uh, interface because you could ask uh, questions uh, if you'd like to. So what I'm doing here, so, uh, so again, it's a good opportunity just to talk about data challenges, right? data science, and uh, it's all quite uh, exciting when you can do all that. You read that file, that only file, which is John Hopkins file, uh, John Hopkins University data set file, and then you can start uh, visualizing in a number of different ways. So I'll show you what I'm visualizing here. In this tab, I'm reading the data right now. Then I'm reading uh, the when the last time it was updated. And then I can uh, actually uh, look into uh, any product. So for Ontario, let's look what, what's going on in Ontario right now. So it shows you a number of confirmed cases. Then it shows you speed and acceleration. Now, this is a very simple concept. Uh, everyone would understand what is speed and acceleration. It is essentially, it's a derivative of a total number and acceleration. But how do you compute a derivative? That's a tricky question uh, because uh, our data is actually very, uh, it's not, uh, smooth or it has many missing numbers and it has it go goes back and forth so what I've done here look I look at the national level and it shows you the performance 
p, which is a derivative of uh, totals for all uh, provinces. And um, if I click here, raw data, and I will remove add model for now. So it shows you, it shows you the raw data. It's like new cases, new records each day. And you would see it goes back and forth because for example, today, you know, maybe today uh, the clinic was closed. So they didn't have time to, uh, to write down all the cases. So um, they have not written many cases today, but tomorrow there will be too many cases written. And in fact, in some cases, we even see uh, negative uh, data there. So you would, you do need to filter them. So you do need to aggregate over a period of time. It's like filtering. It's also called the convolution. So, and this is what we do here. So we can compute totals for each province. And look, when you look at each province, of course, it becomes much more meaningful. Look, for Canada, this is what we have for Canada. This is confirmed cases and this is uh, number of release cases. Now, for each province, they do not do not report release cases. They just report uh, the death cases, mortality, and um, uh, and just confirm cases. But now I can look at the speed, and the speed is very interesting. So it's how fast it's increasing daily, and you see that for Ontario, for example, you see actually uh, at some point. Um, the speed was stable, but then again, it started accelerating. For Quebec, for Quebec, actually, it has been accelerating all the time until recently. In Nova Scotia, also, it was accelerating. And actually, you can even compute acceleration. So I'm computing ac acceleration here. Look, so acceleration, you can ac compute acceleration here. And you see that for Ontario, we always are in a positive acceleration. So it's still, it's still uh, accelerating, right? It's uh, not very good for for us, I guess, for the health professionals. It's not good to know that we're still accelerating. In uh, British Columbia, in fact, uh, the situation is much better. So they are not accelerating here. Now, another thing which I have added just a couple of days ago, it's called model. So with one line, uh, once we have computed those features, I can uh, write a function which will uh, approximate this relationship, relationship between, or I'm calling it a uh, vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And it shows you even the uh, confidence interval, 95% confidence interval for your prediction. And uh, my next uh, task will be uh, next weekend, I will add actual predictions. So I can do predictions for the next week, for the next month, and uh, uh, maybe in a couple of months, just based on this dynamic. So this is what I'm doing here. And I hope you guys uh, and the folks, uh, you had opportunity to, uh, to get idea on how you could start coding yourself right away, just again by uh, going into our studio cloud, cut and paste all those libraries then uh, you can press install here and you will get all those libraries installed by the way i'm curious to see what is this, the version number i press Control enter you see very easily and it shows me that uh, the version is 3.6.1 and you remember by my version was uh, is more updated. Now, a very important concept for uh, CBSA employees. Uh, our studio was approved by CBSA IT security last summer. And in fact, you can install it on your CBSA machine. This is amazing, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's really, really amazing because you can have it uh, just sitting on your desktop just as a spreadsheet or PowerPoint or Word. And in fact, I use it even for Word. That because you can, uh, what is called, you can use R Markdown and I'll show you quickly here. Look, file, new file, 
R markdown. And it shows you, it will start, okay. It will start with the sample, with the template. It will take time, time because it needs to load packages. But what is important, it allows you to, uh, to start writing there. And you can write comments and then you can produce a nice PDF file and you can produce even a PowerPoint slides there and you can embed your graphs there or just images from anywhere. So look what it is. It's called uh, R Markdown and we will knit it. It's called knitting a document. And I'll give a name. Also I'll give a name called uh, uh, a report. When you need, okay, I need, yeah, you need to allow a pop-up window and, and actually it, it was needed. So it's a document which was just needed. It was created. Look, it was created from this document. And what is very important that when there is a, something which you don't want to print it, you press Control Shift C, and this would uh, comment out the entire line. So you can put a comment. Okay, I'll just I'll do it. I'll show you what, what will happen. You know, it's like in a HTML file, you can do like that. And then you compile it again. And, uh, and then you can embed, look, you can embed their graphs. You can embed their, all those uh, statistics which you produce. So this is a very important concept. Here, yeah, I'm just checking time. How much time is left? So we'll talk more about maybe R Markdown later because eventually all my applications, these applications are the COVID. All of these are marked down. So I'm just showing the results using the same language. It's the same language as uh, in here. So all my code is written just like that. You see, this sign means uh, a header. Uh, if you want another type of header, you can put uh, this. It's uh, different levels of headers. So that's how you can do it and you compile it later. So now you see here, you have a number of different files here and I'll show you a little trick here. Uh, I really like this uh, trick. In here, look, it's a very, very useful trick. It's this button in here. It allows you to open what is called the table of contents. Okay. I'll try to, okay, here it is. So, and every time you have a comment here, so in R, to make a comment, you put a sharp sign or DS or hashtag. And every time you do it with a, you end with four dashes, it creates a label. And then you can write, write your code with many of those chunks or portions. And you can easily navigate Okay, so you see, now I have uh, another line here. So it's very good. It's very useful when you want to navigate around your code. No. So this is a, a very simple little trick which I'm using all the time. And I hope you'll find it useful. So uh, any questions at this point, I'll just let you speak. 
I don't really have a question. I think we only have one minute left, but I just wanted to thank you, Dimitri, for organizing this. It was very uh, useful, very interesting. It, it, it's really very limited time. Yeah. Uh, so, so again, it's like really, I'm trying to show many things, but I hope it to, do sh to show something very simple in which you can start doing like right away. Again, just go to rstudio.cloud, cut and paste uh, this little code, which reads the uh, COVID data or PCS data or any other type of data. Uh, copy the code in here, just like I did it here. Install those libraries and then run your first line. That's it. And it becomes beautiful because after that, you just do that one and you press control enter and it shows you and it shows you what it is uh, and then you can start running ggplot and many other things to visualize things so i thank you guys everyone uh look like time is running out uh, but please ask questions on uh, again on gc collab by email and hopefully you will start enjoying it soon and we'll just uh,